Comparison between the Bible and Damp, Quran. Whereas, the Bible is a collection of writings by many different authors, the Quran is a dictation, or recitation. The speaker in the Quran, in the first person, is God Almighty, Allah, talking directly to man. In the Bible, you have many men writing about God and you have in some places the word of God speaking to men and still in other places you have some men simply writing about history or personal exchanges of information to one another, x, epistle of John 3. The Bible in the English King James Version consists of 66 small books. About 18 of them begin by saying, this is the revelation God gave to so and so. The rest make no claim as to their origin. You have for example the beginning of the book of Jonah which begins by saying, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Elmati saying, quote and then it continues for two or three pages. We see the author of the book of Luke saying essentially, many people have written about things. It seems fitting for me to do so too. Luke says it seems to him that as long as others are taking in hand to write something about it, even though they were eyewitnesses to the whole thing. He feels that even though he was not, he still has, perfect understanding of all things from the very first. Therefore, this is only a letter from one person to another, neither of whom knew Jesus, peace be upon him, nor were eyewitnesses to any of what had taken place. Why, Estes? If you compare that to one of the four accounts of the life of Jesus, Luke begins by saying, many people have written about this man, it seems fitting for me to do so too. That is all. No claim of saying these words were given to me by God here they are for you it is a revelation, there is no mention of this. Bible is not in the Bible. The Bible does not contain self-reference, that is, the word of Bible is not in the Bible. Now here does the Bible talk about itself. Some scriptures are sometimes pointed to in the Bible, say, here where it talks about itself, but we have to look closely. 2 Timothy 3.16 is the favorite which reads. All scripture is inspired of God, and there are those who would say, here is where the Bible it talks about itself, it says it is inspired of God, all of it. But if you read the whole sentence, you read that this was a letter wrote by Paul to Timothy and the entire sentence says to Timothy. Since you were a young man you have studied the holy scriptures, all scriptures inspired by God, and so on. When Timothy was a young man the New Testament did not exist. The only thing that stems he was talking about are scriptures, which are only a portion of the Bible from before that time. It could not have meant the whole Bible. Bible curses church fathers who removed book of revelations. There is at the end of the Bible a verse which says. Rev 22:18. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, Revelations if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. 19. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Why? Estes. Let anyone who takes away from this book or adds to this book be cursed. This is sometimes pointed to me saying, here is where it sums itself as a whole. But look again and you will see that when it says, let no one change this book, it is talking about that last book, 66, or is it 73 in the Catholic Bible, the book of Revelation. It has two, because any reference will tell you that the book of Revelation was written before certain other parts of the Bible were written. It happens today to be stacked at the end, but there are other parts that came after, so it cannot be referring to the entire book. Incidentally, according to different manuscripts much older than the King James Version, there are different words at the end of the book of Revelation, so how would we resolve that matter? Y. E. Note, the book of Revelation was taken out of the Bible several times and then replaced and then taken out and replaced according to various church councils throughout church history. Guess the church fathers didn't read the curse at the end of the book. Whose word is it? It is an extreme position held only by some Christian groups that the Bible, in its entirety, cover to cover is the revealed word of God in every word. But they do a clever thing when they mention this, or make this claim. They will say that the Bible in its entirety is the word of God, inerrant, no mistakes, in the original writings. So if you go to the Bible and point out some mistakes that are in it you are going to be told. Those mistakes were not there in the original manuscript, they have crept in so that we see them there today. They are going on problem in that position. There is a verse in the Bible Isaiah 40 8 which in fact is so well known that some Bibles printed it on the inside front cover as an introduction and it says. The grass weathers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. 
Here is a claim in the Bible that the Word of God will stand forever, it will not be corrupted, it will not be lost. So, if today you find a mistake in the Bible you have two choices. Either that promise was false that when God said my word will not fade away, he was mistaken, or the portion which has the mistake in it was not a part of the word of God in the first place. Because the promise was that it would be safeguarded, it would not be corrupted. 2. Are there mistakes? I have suggested many times that there are mistakes in the Bible and the accusation comes back very quickly, show me one. Well there are hundreds. If you want to be specific I can mention few. You have for example at 2 Samuel 10 18 a description of a war fought by David saying that he killed 7,000 men and that he also killed 40,000 men on horsebacks. In 1 Chronicles 19 it mentions the same episode saying that he killed 70,000 men and the 40,000 men were not on horsebacks, they were on foot. The point be what is the difference between the pedestrian and not is very fundamental. How did Judas die? Matthew 27 5 says that Judas Iscariot when he died he hung himself. Acts 1 says that, no he jumped off a cliff head first. If you study logic very soon you will come in your course to what they call an undecidable propositions, or meaningless sentences, or statements that cannot be decided because there is no contextual false. One of the classic examples cited is something called the Ephemenides Paradox. This man was Cretan and he said, Cretans always lie, now is that statement true or false? If he was a Cretan and he says that they always lie is he lying? If he is not lying then he is telling the truth then the Cretans don't always lie. You see it cannot be true and it cannot be false, the statement turns back on itself. It is like saying, what I am telling you right now is a lie, would you believe that or not? You see the statement has no true content. It cannot be true and it cannot be false. If it is true it is always false. If it is false it is also true. Well in the Bible at Titus 1 12 the writer is Paul and he is talking about the Cretans. He says that one of their own men, a prophet, said, Cretans always lie, and he says that what this man says is true. It is a small mistake, but the point is that it is a human mistake, you don't find that if you carefully examine the true content of that statement. It cannot be a true statement. Who is the author? Now I come back to the Quran, and as I mentioned the speaker in the Quran is, in the first person, is God. The book claims throughout that it is the word of God. It names itself 70 times as the Quran. It talks about its own contents. It has self-reference. The Quran states in the first surah after Fatiha that, this is the book, there is no doubt in it. It is a guidance for those who are conscious of God, and so on and so on. It begins that way and continues that way stressing that. And there is one very amazing statement in the Quran when you come to the fourth surah 82nd ayah which says to those who say Quran is something else than the word of God. It challenges them saying, have they not considered the Quran, if it came from someone other than God they will find in it many mistakes. Some of you are students, would you dare to hand in a paper after you completed a research work or something at the bottom you put down there, you will not find mistakes in this. Would you dare to challenge your professor that way? Well the current does that. It is telling, if you really think you know where this came from then starts looking for mistakes because you will not find any. Another interesting thing the current does is that it quotes all its critics. There has never, in hundreds of years, ever been some suggestion as to where that book came from but that the current does not already mention that objection and reply to it. Many times you will find the Ada saying something like, do they say such and such and so, say to them such and such and so. In every case there is a reply. More than that the current claims that the evidence of its origin is in itself, and that if you look at this book you will be convinced. Current invites, not demands. So that the current does not demand belief, the current invites belief, and here is the fundamental difference. It is not simply delivered as, here is what you are to believe, but throughout the Quran the statements are always, have you O oh man thought of such and such, have you considered so and so. It is always an invitation for you to look at the evidence, now what do you believe? Bible does not claim Jesus claimed to be Son of God. It is a fact that the words, Son of God, are not found on the lips of Jesus anywhere in the first three gospel accounts, he was always calling himself the Son of Man. And it is a curious form of reasoning that I have seen so often that it is established from Bible that he claimed to be God because, look how the Jews reacted. They will say for example he said such and such and the Jews said he is blaspheming, he claimed to be God and they tried to stone him. So they argue that he must have been claiming to be God because look. 
The Jews tried to kill him. They said that's what he was claiming. But the interesting thing is that all the evidence is then built on the fact that a person is saying, I believe that Jesus was the Son of God because the Jews who killed him said that's what he used to say. His enemies used to say that, so he must have said it, this is what it amounts to. In other hand, we have the words of Jesus saying he would keep the law, the law of Moses and we have the statement in the Bible, why did the Jews kill him? Because he broke the law of Moses. Obviously, the Jews misunderstood him, if he promised he would keep the law, but they killed him because he broke the law, they must have misunderstood him, or lied about him. Writers of Bible, out of context. When I talk about the Bible and quote various verses here and there I am often accused of putting things out of context. To say you have lifted something out of what it was talking about and given it a meaning. I do not want to respond to the accusation as such, but it doesn't seem to occur to many people that perhaps those who wrote portions of the Bible in the first place were guilty of the same thing. Maybe they, some of those writers, believed a certain thing and in order to prove it quoted from their scriptures, the Old Testament. The Hebrew writings, quoted out of context to prove their point. There are examples of that kind of thing. In Matthew 2 it said that a king wanted to kill the young child Jesus so he with his family went to Egypt, and they stayed there until that king died, and then they came back. When the writer of Matthew, whoever he was, because the name Matthew will not be found in the book of Matthew. When he described this event saying that he came back out of Egypt, he said, this was to fulfill a prophecy which is written, and then he quotes Hosea chapter 11, out of Egypt I called my son. So he said because Jesus went to Egypt and then came back out of Egypt and we have this passage in the Hebrew scriptures, out of Egypt I called my son, Jesus must have been the son of God. If you look and see what he was quoting, Hosea 11 colon 1 he quotes the second half of a complete sentence, the complete sentence reads. When Israel was young I loved him and out of Egypt I called my son. Israel the nation was considered as the son of God. Moses was told to go to Pharaoh and say to him, If you touch that nation of people, you touch my son, warning him, warning Pharaoh, don't touch that nation, calling the nation, the son of God. So that this is the only thing talked about in Hosea 11 colon 1. Out of Egypt I called my son, can only refer to the nation of Israel. 3. Curran has internal evidences. Now I can come back to the claim the Curran makes that it has internal evidence of its origin. There are many ways that you can look at this. As one example, if I single out somebody here and say, you know, I know your father, he is going to doubt that, he has never seen me with his father. He would say, how does he look like, is he tall short does he wear glasses? and so on, and if I give him the right answers pretty soon he will get convinced, oh yes, you did meet him. If you apply the same kind of thinking when you look at the current, here is a book that says it came from the one who was there when the universe began. So you should be asking that one, so tell me something that proves it. Tell me something that shows me you must have been there when the universe was beginning. You will find in two different ayahs the statement that all the creation began from a single point, and from this point it is expanding. In 1978 they gave the Nobel Prize to two people who proved that is the case. It is the Big Bang origin of the universe. It was determined by the large radio receivers that they have for the telephone companies which were sensitive enough to pick up the transmissions from satellites and it kept finding background noise that they could not account for until the only explanation came to be. It is the leftover energy from that original explosion which fits in exactly as would be predicted by the mathematical calculation of what would be this thing if the universe began from a single point and exploded outwards. So they confirmed that, but in 1978, centuries before that here is the current saying the heavens and the earth in the beginning they were one piece and split and says in another ayah, of the heavens we are expanding it. Current has exact accuracy. Let me tell you about a personal investigation, it occurred to me that there are a number of things you can find in the current that give evidence to its origin, internal evidence. If the current is dictated from a perfect individual, it originates with God, then there should not be any wasted space, it should be very meaningful. There should be nothing that we do not need that you can cut off, and it should not be missing anything. And so that everything in there should really be there for a specific purpose. And I got to thinking about the ayah which I mentioned before, it says, the likeness of Jesus is the likeness of Adam. It an equation, it uses the Arabic word, middle, it says Jesus, Adam, equal. You go to the index of the current, you look up the name ISA. 
it is in the current 25 times, you look up the name Adam it is there 25 times. They are equal, through scattered references but 25 of each. Follow that through and you will find that in the current there are 8 places where an ayah says something is like something else, using this, middle. You will find in every case and take both sides of it whatever that word is look it up in the index and it will be let's say 110 times and look up the other word and it will be said to be equal to. The same 110. That is quite a project of coordination if you try to write a book that way yourself. So that everywhere you happen to mention that such and such is like such and such that then you check your index, filing system, or your IBM punch cards or whatever. To make sure that in this whole book you mention them both the same number of times. But that's what you will find in the current. Current provides reason. What I am talking about is built on a thing that is called in logic, use and mention of a word. When you use a word, you are using its meaning. When you mention a word, you are talking about the symbol without the meaning. For example, if I say Toronto is a big city, I use the word Toronto as I meant this place Toronto is a big city. But if I say to you Toronto has seven letters, I am not talking about this place Toronto, I am talking about this word, Toronto. So, the revelation is above reasoning, but it is not above reason. That is to say we are more apt not to find in the current something that is unreasonable, but we may find something that we would have never figured out for ourselves. Unique word refers to itself in current. The author of this sentence said if this book came from someone besides God then you will find in it many ictilafen, inconsistencies. The word ictilaf is found many times in the current. But the word ictilafen is only found once in the current. So there are not many ictilafen in the current, there is only one, where the sentence is mentioned. So you see how things are put together perfectly. It has been suggested to mankind, find a mistake. Man could not get hold of a mistake, and he is very clever, because this sentence could also mean. Find many ictilafen and so he quickly goes to the index to see if he can find many of them and there is only one. Sorry clever person.